At any given point here on this campus, we usually have somewhere in the vicinity of 80 adult breeding dogs. We collect semen on all of our male dogs, and it's frozen and stored in liquid nitrogen. Half of it is kept on this campus and half on the Morristown campus. Any dog samples are split between the two campuses so that, God forbid, we lose one of the freezers, we've got the backup of the other. In the colony up in the breeding area, the males live with the females. You know, as long as they're not in heat, we do try to house the dogs so that they always have someone that they're living with and they don't have to be penned by themselves, just for socialization purposes. When the females are in heat, we breed them. They have maybe four litters and then they're retired. During the dog's pregnancy, we do three ultrasounds at 25, 35, and 45 days. And during that time, we would first check to make sure that they are pregnant, and then we assess the uh, viability of the fetus. And as they get closer to um, parturition, which means that birth process, uh, we move them from the breeding kennel where the adult breeders live over to the whelping kennel and they go over there 10 to 14 days before they're due to whelp so that they can acclimate. The whelping kennel is the hot, most highly protected zone and going in there we actually do another foot change and we do, um, we scrub our arms again before entering there and dogs entering in there to whelp actually have a bath before they go in. Once they have their litters and they go down to the other facility, the whelping end, then they stay down there for about six weeks till their puppies are weaned and then the females back up top into breeding and we'll breed them you know, the next time around on their next heat cycle. We have somewhere between um, oh, about 85, 90 litters a year and somewhere around 7.8 puppies is our average litter size. On-site health care for dogs. So since the dogs live with us for two years, there's preventive health care that's in place. And in the event um, of the, say a dog becomes lame, we also have a radiology suite so that we can take radiographs, x-rays. Sometimes we need to do C-sections. And the wonderful thing about this facility is that we don't have to go outside to do that that we have a surgery suite right here. Well, it's important to maintain a routine of um, health care for the dog. So we do everything as far as their um, yearly physicals all the way up to tracking their breeding cycles and breeding them and then whelping the dogs. Socialization, raising calm and confident dogs. These dogs are bred, they're built to make those kind of decisions. If the person ac accidentally makes a judgment call, let's say to step into the street, and there's a car that's being confrontational with the dog, the dog's trained to stop or even back up. Or let's say there's a big hole in the sidewalk and the person wants to go straight ahead, but the dog's gonna say, no, this isn't safe. We need to go to the street and proceed around this object. The reason we wanna produce calm and confident puppies, which will in turn turn into our confident seeing eye dogs that are in training is because these dogs are exposed to everything out in the world you have noises traffic just the people walking by them and they're going to need to be really sure of themselves with what they're doing as they're guiding a blind person down the street the reason why these dogs are calm is because they are handled on a daily basis uh, our goal is every day to give them some mental and physical stimulation. They have their actual early childhood experience right here. And by providing them with playthings in their pens and, and providing them with a socialization program in the puppy playroom, we even, we even supply them with their first car ride. We actually take the puppies from their pens, put them on a little cart and drive them uh, to, to the playroom. And so they're, they're actually experiencing uh, a different center of gravity. Everything that we do, all the toys that are in the playroom, are geared toward things that they actually will be experiencing later on in life. We have grates and things that tip, little bridges, stairs, and lots of different textures. 
We actually even play a CD with all kinds of different noises on it, vacuum cleaners, blenders, airplanes, gunshots, cars backfiring. We start off playing it quietly and then as the puppies get a little bit older and more experienced, it's just a background noise for them and they get used to it. So they leave here with a lot of confidence. The Seeing Eye, a special place. This is such an interesting place to work at because there's so much to it. Besides that, uh, you feel like you're doing something really good for blind people. The Seeing Eye is really a special place. To see that miracle of the match, the person coming in with their cane and not really knowing their way around, and then when they leave four weeks later with that dog, and to see how their heads are held high and how they're they walk faster than most people do. It's a beautiful thing, and to think that I can play some small part even in making that possible, that gets me up every single morning.